Welcome to this, uh, this special edition of Trained Up in Torah. Happy, uh, happy Shuffle World. Shuffle World? What is Shuffle World? <laughs> That's what we're going to find out today. Today we're going to find all of our all Shuffle World. Are you ready? Let's go. Shama. Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malhuto Leolam Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful day that you have brought us to, this Shavuot, this special time that you have appointed for your children to observe and to honor and to keep. And we pray that you would please um, be with us in a special way as we celebrate this special day. And we um, love you so much and thank you. Pray this in Yeshua's wonderful name. Amen. Shalom. Uh, I have a song I'd like to share with you, and it's based on this special day of Shavuot. Um, and Shavuot was a very special time. Uh, the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples of Yeshua on Shavuot, and, and just so many things. And so it's a very special time that we count every day up to this special day of Shavuot. The name of this song is Waiting, and I hope you enjoy it.
Amen. Shalom. Happy Shavuot, everybody. What is Shavuot? Let's find out. So we're going to read every scripture that has the word for Shavuot in it. So the festival of weeks is what you'll see most of the time in scripture. Shavuot is the Hebrew for weeks. So this is the festival of weeks. So we're going to read every one of them. Don't worry, there's not that many. Okay, Exodus 34, 22. And perform the festival of weeks for yourselves, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times in the year all your men are to appear before the Master, Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. So we just got a little bit of what is Shavuot. It's the festival of weeks, which is the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And it's one of the three times when the men are to appear before Yahweh. Numbers 28, 26. And on the day of the first fruits, when you bring a new grain offering to Yahweh at your festival of weeks, you have a set apart gathering, you do no servile work. So that's real similar to Sabbath. You're not supposed to do servile work and you have a set apart gathering. All right, let's keep reading. And you shall bring near a burnt offering as a sweet fragrance to Yahweh, two young bulls, one ram, and seven lambs a year old, with their grain offering of fine flour mixed with wool, three tenths of an ephah for each bull, two tenths for the one ram, one tenth for each of the seven lambs, one male goat to make atonement for you, perfect ones, they are for you. Prepare them with their drink offerings, besides the continual burnt offerings with its grain offering. So right there, we learned that it's a day to have a set-apart gathering and you do no servo work. And there were some special offerings that went on on the day of Festival of Weeks. All right, so now we're going to jump to Deuteronomy 16, 8. Six days you eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day, there is a closing festival to Yahweh your Elohim. You do no servile work. Kaylee, this isn't the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why are you reading that? Well, that's important, so let's keep going. Count seven weeks for yourself. Beginning to count seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain. Remember, this is the Festival of Weeks, and that's because we're going to be counting seven weeks. But when are we counting from? We're counting from when they begin to put the sickle to the grain. So when is that? Do you know? Well, there's another feast day that is special for they can't start eating of the new grain until after they've offered the wave sheaf. So when they go to harvest the first batch of grain, they do the wave sheaf offering, and then they can start harvesting for themselves. Okay, back to verse 10. And you shall perform the festival of weeks to Yahweh your Elohim according to the voluntary offerings from your hand, which you give as Yahweh your Elohim blesses you. Now remember, we were supposed to count the seven weeks, and that's when we perform the festival of weeks. All right, verse 11. And you shall rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim, you and your son and your daughter and your male servant and your female servant and the Levite who is within your gates, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow who are in your midst, at the place where Yahweh your Elohim chooses to make his name dwell. And you shall remember that you were a slave in Mitzrayim, and you shall guard and do these laws. So what did we just learn? We learn that it's a day we're supposed to rejoice, and we're supposed to remember that we were a slave in Mitzrayim, and we're supposed to guard and do these laws. So, do you understand what Shavuot is yet? It's a special day. That's the harvest of wheat. When we start harvesting the wheat. And it's a celebration. We're supposed to rejoice. It's also a day for a set-apart gathering and for not working. Like on Sabbath. And we were supposed to have counted seven weeks from the wave sheaf offering to now. Okay, 2 Chronicles 8, 12. 
Then Shlomo offered burnt offerings to Yahweh on the altar of Yahweh, which he had built before the porch, even as the duty of every day required, offering according to the command of Moshe, for the Sabbaths, and for the new moons, and for the appointed times three times a year, the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, remember, that's what we're doing, and the festival of booths. And according to the ruling of David his father, he appointed the divisions of the priests for their service, the Levite for their duties, to praise and serve before the priests, as the duty of each day required, and the gatekeepers by their division to each gate. For so was the command of David the man of Elohim. And they did not turn aside from the command of the sovereign to the priest and the Levites concerning any matter or concerning the treasuries. So we've heard multiple times about keeping the laws, and in this story, Shalomo did not turn aside from the commands that had been given. And he made sure the offerings were going on, those special offerings we mentioned on all of these days, including the Festival of Weeks. Okay, the next one, I'm just going to read the first verse because we're going to read the whole chapter in a minute. Acts 2, verse 1. And when the day of the festival of weeks had come, they were all with one mind and one place. All right, now we're going to jump to Acts 20, verse 16. For Shaul had decided to sail past Ephesus, so that he might lose no time in Asia. For he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of the festival of weeks. All right, now we got 1 Corinthians 16, 8. And I shall remain in Ephesus until the festival of weeks. So that's another verse. So that is every verse that has the words festival of weeks. Now there's one more I'm going to read because it's about the festival of weeks, but it doesn't have the words in there. So I'm going to read that one. Leviticus 23, 14. And you do not eat bread or roasted grain or fresh grain until the same day that you have brought an offering to your Elohim, a law forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. So you can't eat of the new grain until you've offered some to Yahweh. So that has to do with the wave sheaf offering that we talked about close to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf, remember the sheaf? That you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, you shall count for yourselves seven completed Sabbaths. Remember the festival of weeks, we count seven weeks. Seven completed Sabbaths, seven weeks. See how it's about it, even though it didn't say the festival of weeks? And to the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, you count fifty days. Then you shall bring a new grain offering to Yahweh. Bring from your dwellings for a wave offering two loaves of bread of two tenths of an ephah of fine flour. They are baked with leaven, first fruits to Yahweh. Remember earlier it told us it was about wheat. So this is the wheat harvest, the first of the wheat harvest, and they're going to bring two loaves of bread that's leavened made from that grain. And besides the bread, you shall bring seven lambs a year old, perfect ones, and one young bull and two rams. They are a burnt offering to Yahweh, their grain offering and their drink offerings an offering made by fire for a sweet fragrance to Yahweh. And you shall offer one male goat as a sin offering, and two male lambs a year old as a peace offering. And the priest shall wave them besides the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before Yahweh, besides the two lambs. They are set apart to Yahweh for the priests. And on this same day you shall proclaim a set apart gathering for yourselves, you do no servile work on it. Remember, that was earlier when it said Festival Weeks, so we know this is the Festival of Weeks. A law forever in all your dwellings, throughout your generations. That's a big deal, a law forever. And when you reap the harvest of your land, do not completely reap the corners of your field when you reap. And do not gather any gleanings from your harvest. Leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am Yahweh your Elohim. So that's pretty cool when, when we're supposed to be harvesting our food, 
Yahweh doesn't want us to get the corners and he doesn't want us to get any of it that that has fallen. He doesn't want us to go back and get any extra that we might have forgotten or dropped or spilt. He wants us to leave those for the poor and the strangers so that they have something to eat even if they didn't own land and didn't grow food themselves. So that's pretty cool that Yahweh is looking out for everybody like that and wants us to look out for our neighbors. So that's the festival of Shavuot. It's a set apart gathering. You don't do any servile work. You're to rejoice. It's the day that the first fruit of the wheat harvest would come in and would have been made into two leavened loaves and been a wave offering. It's the day after you've counted the seven weeks from the wave sheaf offering, which was the offering made by the first fruits of the barley harvest back at Passover, unleavened bread time. And there you go. That's what it is. Now, there are some people that believe that the law was given to Moshe on the mountain. The Ten Commandments was given to him on Shavuot. It doesn't tell us that in scripture. So we don't know that for sure, but a lot of people believe that. And when you look at the time frame, it could possibly be that way. When it when they leave Egypt, it tells us what months that they do certain things. And it's possible it might could have been. But we don't know for sure. But we do know it's a law forever, a day to rejoice, an extra Sabbath that we get to rest. And the morrow, that means the morning, after the seven Sabbaths. So that's why it's on the first day of the week. So in a moment, we're going to read that story in Acts, which is on. It's a special story that's on the day of the Festival of Weeks. And so we're going to read what happens there, because that's something pretty cool. So let's go check that out in a minute. Happy Shavuot, everyone, or Happy Pentecost. My name is Leah, and I'm so glad you're here with us today. So our scripture story talked a lot about grains and what Yahweh wants us to do before we can harvest those grains. So I thought it would be fun to talk a little about wheat, more specifically, einkorn wheat. Did you know that the wheat back in scripture times was a lot different than the wheat we have today? The ancient grains back then were a lot healthier than the modern grains of today. Einkorn is one of those more popular ancient grains. Einkorn has lower amounts of gluten than commercial wheats. Its name comes from German and is translated to mean single grain. Einkorn contains only 14 chromosomes, whereas modern wheat contains 42 chromosomes. And einkorn does not contain the D chromosome, which seems to be what a lot of people are allergic to when they have wheat intolerances. Chromosomes are super tiny curled up coils of DNA that are in the nucleus of almost all cells in our bodies and in plants and animals. Humans have 23 pairs of these tiny chromosomes. Einkorn is also a lot easier to digest than normal wheats are and it has more protein and antioxidants than modern wheat. Einkorn used to grow all over the world but as farmers began cultivating modern grain Einkorn used to grow all over the world, but as farmers began cultivating modern grains that are bigger and easier to harvest, einkorn became a little forgotten, and now mostly grows in France, Turkey, and Morocco, and throughout some of what used to be the Soviet Union. Einkorn can survive in terrain that is difficult for other types of wheat. Its smaller berries and tighter husks help it survive in harsher conditions. The einkorn husk is very thick and so it can make processing the grain difficult. But the thick husks help reduce mold growth on the wheat. Einkorn takes about 100 to 140 days to mature, depending on its growing conditions and climate. It doesn't produce as big of crops as modern wheat, but einkorn thrives in less fertile ground than modern wheat can live in. Einkorn tastes similar to normal wheat, but it's a little bit nutty and toasty. Sounds good, right? You can plant it in the fall for a spring harvest, or you can plant it in the spring and harvest it in the fall or winter. You can actually buy einkorn wheat at some stores and online. Have you ever had einkorn before? My family has a few times and we love it. If you try it, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I hope you have a blessed Chevy Wot. See you next time. Love it. 
Ein Baben sein, Hätten, Tätten, Joden, Kaff, Lamit, Nem, Unsame, Kein, Pein, Sade, Kofen, Reis, Sinen, Schienen, Taff. Shalom, Mishachas. Hope you're having a blessed Shavuot with your family. I am so blessed to be here with you today to go over some Hebrew. I have really, really missed you guys so much. So let's get started. Since we are commanded to take two loaves of bread to the temple, I figured we should probably review the word bread. Bread in Hebrew is lechem. Lechem. You're doing great. Our next word for today is moed. Moed. Moed is the word for feast. The plural for feast is moedim. Moedim. Shavuot is one of the seven appointed feasts that Yahweh gives us, eight when counting the Shabbat. Our last word for today is praise. Praise in Hebrew is Yada. Yada. You're doing so great. Well, that's all the Hebrew we have for today. I pray that you have an amazing, happy, and blessed Shavuot. Let's go see what else that our Tuit family has for us today. Happy Shavuot! Hey there y'all, Miss Jessica with our really quick history lesson today. So we were going to talk about bread. What do you think and how do you think people got bread back in scripture time? Right? They couldn't just literally run to the store every time they needed bread. Maybe they were wanting to make sandwiches or have bread with their dinner. Do you think that they left and ran to the market really quick? No way! They bake their own, and each household usually made their own bread, so that means that they had to mill and prepare the flour themselves as well. Do you know what that means? To mill it, it's like grinding down. So the first way that was recorded of milling was by using something called a mortar and pestle. So we have an example of what these look like, and you would grind pushing down really hard with the little handle thing there and grind the wheat up using the, the pestle until it was a fine powder. It was hard work. Now once all of the wheat was ground up into this nice fine powder, it was basically flour, what we call flour today. I'm sure you've seen your mom, your grandma, or your aunt, or somebody, you know, making biscuits or bread and that nice fine white powdery stuff is flour. Now how did they bake it? The bread was likely baked on top of hot stones much like we cook in a pan on top of our stoves nowadays. And then the dough would have been mixed with water or an oil and it would have been kneaded well and then placed onto those stones to actually bake. Maybe they even added some spices or herbs into the bread dough to give it more flavor. I don't know about you guys, but I really love bread when it has a little bit of extra something on it. And so that's what they would do. They would add those spices in just to give it a little nice extra flavor. Now there's many ways to enjoy bread. What's your favorite way to enjoy bread? Do you like a loaf of bread? You can have flat cakes fried breads, biscuits, crackers. There's a lot of ways that we can enjoy bread. Maybe you and your family can make your favorite type of bread this week and have fun with it. Shalom, y'all. Acts 2 And when the day of the festival of weeks had come, they were all with one mind in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from the heavens, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues, as of fire, and settled on each one of them. 
And they were all filled with the set-apart spirit and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them to speak. Now in Yerushalayim there were dwelling Yehudim, dedicated men from every nation under the heaven. And when the sound came to be, the crowd came together and were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to each other, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how do we hear each one in our own language, in which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and those dwelling in Aram Naharaim, both Yehuda and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, both Phrygia and Pamphylia, Mitzrayim and other parts of Libya, around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Yehudim and converts. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the great deeds of Elohim. And they were all amazed and were puzzled, saying to each other, What does this mean? And others, mocking, said, They have been filled with sweet wine. But Kepha, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Men of Yehuda, and all those dwelling in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen closely to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you imagine, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Yoel. And it shall be in the last days, says Elohim, that I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and also on my male servants and on my female servants. I shall pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I shall show wonders in the heaven, above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and splendid day of Yahweh. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahweh shall be saved. Men of Yisrael, hear these words. Yahshua of Nazareth, a man from Elohim, having been pointed out to you by mighty works and wonders and signs, which Elohim did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. This one, given up by the set purpose and foreknowledge of Elohim, you have impaled and put to death through the hands of lawless men. Him Elohim raised up, having loosed the pangs of death, because it was impossible that he could be held in its grips. For David says concerning him, I saw Yahweh before me continually, because he is at my right hand, in order that I should not be shaken. For this reason my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad, and now my flesh shall also rest in expectation, because you shall not leave my being in the grave, nor shall you give your kind one to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You shall fill me with joy in your presence. Men and brothers, let me speak boldly to you of the ancestor David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being a prophet then, and knowing that Elohim had sworn with an oath to him of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, to raise up the Messiah to sit on his throne, Foreseeing this, he spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah, that his being was neither left in the grave, nor did his flesh see corruption. Elohim has raised up this Yeshua, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of Elohim, and having received from the Father the promise of the set-apart spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself said, Yahweh said to my master, Set at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that Elohim has made this Yeshua, whom you impelled, both Master and Messiah. And having heard this, they were pierced to the heart, and said to Kepha and the rest of the emissaries, Men, brothers, what shall we do? And Kepha said to them, Repent. And let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yeshua Messiah for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. 
for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as Yahweh our Elohim shall call. And with many other words he earnestly witnessed and urged them, saying, Be saved from this crooked generation. Then those indeed who gladly received his word were immersed, and on the day about three thousand beings were added to them. And they were continuing steadfastly in the teachings of the emissaries, and in the fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. And fear came upon every being, and many wonders and signs were being done through the emissaries. And all those who believed were together, and had all in common, and sold their possessions and property, and divided them among all, as anyone might have need. And day by day, continuing with one mind in the set-apart place, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising Elohim and having favor with all the people. And the Master added to the assembly those who were being saved day by day. We just learned all about Shuffle and Woe, and now we're going to learn about something yummy. And we have a craft! Let's go! Hug Samaya! Happy Shavuot! I'm Miss Shannon here with a memory verse for you. Um, I've got it hidden behind this flag for a special review. One, two, three! Here. One, let's read it. And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. Maase or Acts 2 1. Okay. I'm going to erase a few words now. Okay, and we're going to read it together now. And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. Maase or Acts 2 1. Good job. Alright, now we're going to erase a few more words. of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. Maase or Acts 2-1. Okay, good job. Now we're going to erase festival and come and one And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. Maase or Acts 2 1. Good job. All right. I assume you're doing it with me. I'm going to erase. harder. So, here we go. And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. Maase or Acts 2-1. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to erase all of these words up here. We'll just have We'll just have the reference down here. Think we can do it? Let's see. Alright. And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. 
Monse or act two one. Okay, good job if you said it with me. All right, I'm going to erase this now and we're gonna say our memory verse one more time without any words to help us. Okay. And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. Maase or acts to one. Great job, guys! Now who were they and where were they? Who are we talking about in this verse? Well, we're talking about the Talmudim, the disciples of Yeshua, who had gathered in in um Jerusalem. They were in the upper house at the time. Um is what it was called, the upper room actually. Um and the thing is they had been told by Yeshua right be um right before he left that they were they had to go wait in Yerushalayim, Jerusalem for the um the coming of the Ruach HaKodesh basically. Um so they were all together and they were praying and they were um worshiping probably um <laughs> I think they were but and they were just all together in this fellowship waiting for that power to be endued to them from on high and in the next verse which um we didn't have up here it says that the Ruach HaKodesh did come and it was really awesome they had these tongues of fire come on their heads and um well you probably are gonna hear about this in the story or something but they had some really cool stuff happen where, um, where they spoke to this multitude of people that were um, from all kinds of countries all over the place and they spoke different languages. Um, and all of these people were able to understand what they were saying, this message they were preaching about Yeshua, um, in their own languages. So that was like a pretty miraculous thing that happened. So. Um, yeah, it was a really cool thing that happened, um, and it was because they were all gathered together in obedience to Yeshua, saying they had to wait for this um, coming of the Ruach HaKodesh, and they were waiting on the special day that we're celebrating now. So think about that as you're celebrating Shavuot today. I hope you have a blessed day. Shabbat Shalom. Happy Shavuot, everybody! This is Miss Soraya with today's craft. Today we are making tongues of fire. What you will need for this craft is paper, colored pencils, markers, or crayons, and glue or tape. I hope you enjoy.
fun making this craft with me, and have a blessed day. Shalom. Have you ever made homemade bread before? We've made homemade bread lots of times, and there's nothing like homemade bread. So we'll have a recipe in the description so you can make some homemade bread yourselves. Have a blessed week and a happy, rejoiceful Shavuot. Hi, Torah friends. This is Brother Stan, and I wanted to say Chag Sameach, Chag Sameach Shavuot. That means Joyful Feast of Shavuot. And we're really glad that you were able to join us today on this Set Apart Day of Yahweh's. It's one of His commands. And I've got a song that I'd like to share with you that's about being His people and keeping His commands. And it's called One of the People.
Hag Sameach. Hag Sameach Shavuot. And now it's time for our closing prayer. And so if you'll just join me now and we'll go and speak to Yahweh. Almighty Yahweh, our Father in heaven, praise be to your name. It is most set apart. Father, we thank you for this uh, opportunity to come together on a special edition of Trained Up in Torah uh, as we celebrate your feast of Shavuot. We thank you, Father, for giving us your Torah. We thank you, Father, for uh, giving us your word made flesh. And we thank you for giving us your spirit. All these things that happened uh, in such a wonderful way much of what happened on Shavuot. And we just pray that as we uh, set ourselves apart on this set-apart day of yours, that you would just bless us and, and uh, continue to watch over us. And we thank you uh, because we know that we'll be blessed by keeping your commands. We love you, Yahweh, and we praise you. And we give you all honor and esteem. And we pray these things in the name of Yahshua Hamasiach and for your great name's sake. Hallelujah. Have a great week, Torah friends. We'll see you next time. Shalom.